Hi, this is Chris Meunier. Welcome to this video recording with an overview of quality assurance in the software development and delivery domain. This video recording you're listening to or watching now is geared toward an audience which include company executives, vice presidents, managers, engineers, testers, operations teams, product managers, and business analysts who are looking to or are required to consider incorporating a quality assurance and testing level in their software development and delivery life cycles. The QA activities and contribution is little understood or more than often misunderstood. This currently can, can be attributed to little to no formal education devoted to this critical operation for successful software production, especially for computer science students in universities and colleges. Then when the graduate gets a job, they are presented within an organization, organization with this role of responsibilities they are not familiar with. There are no degrees for quality assurance and the backgrounds of individuals in quality assurance and testing in software is incredibly varied. There are certifications and institutions offering more learning and education about quality assurance and testing. Let's look at what the primary operation purpose and value is for the software quality assurance and testing practices. Quality assurance or QA when performed correctly and successfully will actually help an organization deliver software on time at the right cost to build and at the predefined quality level. This inarguable business value can be unlocked through the proper investment, installation, incorporation, implementation, and tracking to support executive management strategy and organizational requirements. And this is because QA and its best known counterpart quality control or QC, are part of all practices during the software development and delivery lifecycle from inception to production. By employing and incorporating such a sound best practices, organizations can simultaneously perform risk management and mitigation and execute product innovation through acceptance. The primary piece of knowledge to help with testing and results is understanding QA and QC. QA is prevention and proactive. Its practices and processes are part of QA. QC is detection and can be reactive more than proactive most of the time. And the testing activities exist within an, in QC. For all intents and purposes, QC is a preventative activity that fits within QA, but for matters of conversation and implementation, it's best to think of them as separate and equal yet balanced and harmonized for the sake of customer and client experience. All of these activities fit under what is known as quality management. Most often, many in the software industry will simply refer to it as quality assurance or QA. Quality management may also be accompanied with regulations for finance, health, government, and such industries. To name a couple for privacy, there is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, called simply HIPAA. Or for public corporation regulation, there is the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, also referred to as SOX compliance. Quality planning and improvement, such as optimization, are also pillars under the quality management structure. When we refer to a particular team which operates as the testing or QA team, the business requirements may necessitate their focus to be one or many activities. These activities could be manually performed or in an automated way with machines performing the testing. The QA testing team will depend on other teams' contribution to quality and testing as well as to ensure less non-successful results when they perform their own responsibilities. Depending on the needs of the business, the QA testing team will work with the teams and executives and stakeholders to scope out their activities. Ideally, statistics can be generated from tools so as to provide the means to speak with evidence in all matters for decision making and specifically go no dis decisions for releases into production. Tactically, there are specifically a handful of activities that provide much value to support optimal and ideal QA practices. Cre creating and maintaining a quality plan 
document provides transparency and the ability to scrutinize the QA testing practices of develop, development and delivery. A risk log ensures an ongoing risk management discussion. The evaluation of quality of a project output, the product, the software, the service, etc., allows teams to work alongside each other and all disciplines to prevent and detect issues from occurring. Retrospectives, certain types of meetings, provide a medium for reflection, opinions, experiences, and ideas to be communicated amongst teams to optimize processes and output going forward. A best practices library, whether manual or automated, will help to guide reviews and identify deviations. We come to a rather interesting topic that many in QA and software development and delivery in general seem to be unaware of, and that is the cost of quality. This is a manufacturing background and total cost of ownership perspective that activities that to support good quality and remedi remediations of poor quality can have associated investment and expense costs to determine the, a total cost of quality. Investments in QA and QC and other activities under quality management, such as planning and retrospectives, are part of the good quality side of the formula. This could include training, code reviews, and setting up test environments. Expenses due to failures inside an organization, or unfortunately, once the software is in the hands of customers and clients, are part of the poor quality side of the formula. This could, this could include analysis of issues, bug fixing and rework, downtime, loss of business, and brand or reputation loss. With external poor quality, sometimes companies have gone as far as to change their name because the expenses were just too much to try and recover. In making investments on the good quality side, there is an equilibrium in which opposing forces or influencers are balanced with a pendulum to oscillate between one extreme and another, good quality and bad quality. If a software startup is developing and releasing a prototype to raise venture capital, they may decide to put little investment on the good quality side, not to hire any QA testing staff, and rely on engineers to perform testing. If a well-known space program is to launch humans into space where there is no oxygen and many risks, they will be driven to put a lot of investment on the good quality side, hire many QA testing staff, and rely on a number of quality gates and checks to perform testing before launch. This is the balance in the equilibrium. Assuring quality is folded into all the other phases during software development and delivery. Most often, QA, or specifically testing, or QC, when specifications of product or process can be used to evaluate against, is seen as a phase or step toward the later part of a project. Ideally and optimally, to get the most out of software development and delivery, QA is a function and responsible responsibility of all teams and perhaps a specific team for the independent review and results. In this way, one group's quality control is another group's quality assurance, they, may, they might say. When engineering performs a code review to ensure the style and intent and usage of code, the testing team can rely on that as a function of their own quality assurance before testing, for example. Specifically, during a QA testing phase, there is a scoping to determine the level of efforts involved and expected, like during analysis, design, product, and development, the expected results. Creating a quality plan or test strategy document, which is a living document throughout the project, includes delivery risks, testing coverage, and success criteria. This is something everyone and anyone, no matter which role is, is encouraged to review. Unless there is a situation of least privilege due to the sensitivity or security and use of the software under development for delivery. Creating and maintaining a feature test case inventory requires development and the setup of reports so decisions can, can be made for the acceptance and the quality of the software product. Creating and maintaining a workflow or end-to-end -end test case will require development, management, and reporting for the sake of positive or happy paths to support the key customers and clients. There may be a need for QA testing team to facilitate release planning and management on behalf of the stakeholders and would require collaboration with engineering. In an optimized manner, there is the implementation of test cases in an automation manner through a test harness 
against long-standing environments, such as a test environment, or short-lived environments during a continuous integration process. All of these activities to be scoped will involve team collaboration and understanding for the sake of customer and client experience. The ideal way to think of employing and incorporating quality assurance and quality control during the software development and delivery practice is through a shift left lens. This moves the quality control activities and product acceptance, also known as testing, to the beginning of a project timeline. The QA and QC team can, has a seat at the table during early discussions on the project to ensure that testing debt does not pile up. The shift left approach is a very, very popular, not only from an automated way for testing, but also a manual way for evaluating stories and requirements and acceptance criteria to start designing the test to be performed before code has even been crafted or created. In this way, the acceptance gate for the product can be well known and publicized for all teams to be aware of and aim for. Specifications can be geared for the product and the process, stories, modern post-it notes and feature requests, acceptance criteria, a definition of ready, a definition of done, and bug reports with expected re behavior, actual behavior, and steps to reproduce allow for and support tests to be created in automated and manual ways to optimize the QA function involvement across all teams. When looking at a software project in parts or mini projects within a project, the testing activities can be viewed as a project itself. In this way, when crafting a plan, a flow can and will ideally be created to follow best practices of quality in all product lifecycle phases, mainly to enable testing early and often. Teams can work together, such as the Three Amigos approach, to ensure cross-practice agreement on end-to-end -end and user-facing solution behavior and human-readable end-to-end -end tests. Teams will ensure all stories describe the user value and provide thorough acceptance criteria for feature and user acceptance testing. Anyone and any everyone can identify then provide detailed steps on how to produce bugs, their severity, the expected behavior, and include additional material like screenshots if necessary in bug reports. And the entire team will support and strive to use continue, continuous integration, testing, and deployment on branches to review and test all changes prior to shipping. Even though there is no formalized degree for QA and testing professionals, no matter what the path or certifications along the way, there are a variety of titles and roles within organizations to manage and perform the QA and testing responsibilities. Careers in software quality management, assurance, control, testing are needed and may be groomed out of engineering, sales, customer support, business analysis, and product management. As you will see, there is not only a number of titles, but there, but also a career path in many organizations for upward promotion, like any function in a business. Some quality and testing positions, depending on the maturity and funding or revenue of a business, may be geared toward consultant or contractor positions, working with C-level executives to ensure that teams are doing their part to mitigate the risk of issues arising later in the software development and delivery timeline of a project. These may be on an advisory or interim manager model of engagement. Thank you for your time to learn more about modern software quality assurance practices, models, and activities. I hope you learn more about it.